I'm just doing this video to address a comment I got left by somebody called Charlotte and she's no longer housebound, her energy has improved, she's seen a few improvements but she still doesn't feel like she's really taken off, she's not exactly where she wants to be. She's got energy now, she's just not housebound, she's improved but it's not quite there. The first thing I would like to say is that's amazing that you've actually improved to the point where you're no longer housebound, you're getting you're actually seeing improvements. So whatever you're doing is working. And usually with these things, depending on how long you've been sick and how long you've been improving for, it can just take time. Really, whenever I meet someone that says, oh yeah, I'm making improvements, say I've been doing this for two months and I feel better, but you know, I'm still not right. It's literally carrying on those good behaviors consistently that are gonna give those results over time. Really, when it comes to that situation, you just gotta keep so consistent at the good quality sleep, as much as you can, the good quality food, making sure what your internal environment's like. You know, if you, you're feeling like, oh, I hate my life, it's shit, you know, I don't really care, you're telling yourselves like, you know, I don't really, I'm not really excited to change, I'm not really, I don't really care. So finding something that makes you enthusiastic about the future and where you're going, just, for example, concentrating on those little steps you've made and the, the progress you've made. Wow, you know, if I've made this much progress in just two or three months, where can I be a year from now? You know, where, where will that lead me? If I have all the energy that I require to take on my life, what will I want to go and achieve? Whatever it is, because everyone's different. Everyone's different when it comes to motivation. But finding something you can be happy or excited about, getting into that state as much as you can. And I know it's very difficult because... You know, the world is not sympathetic. The world does not care. If you've fallen by the wayside, you have a chronic illness, everyone moves, you know, no one cares. There's no health care system that's there to make sure you're all right or a support network or uh, a retreat where you go to recover. <laughs> no one cares. No one cares. So just be kind to yourself and really Try and find something that makes you more content and happy about the place you're in. It's not forever. Life changes so rapidly, you know, from one year to the next. So try and find something that you are content about. When I was, you know, I hadn't left my house yet, I was recovering. I would get in the bath and I'd sit in the bath and I'd go, oh God, you know, I love the fact that I can have a bath. You know, I love the fact that I put Epsom salts in the bath and vitamin C and everything, and it feels really nice. And, oh, actually, if I was born a year, a hundred years ago, this wouldn't, you know, the average person would have no way to have access to this. And I just cycle through all these things. Oh, you know what? I'm pretty comfortable here. I mean, this is quite nice, actually. I know in this moment, if I focus on where I am right now, I'm in a warm, cozy bath, and I'm being grateful for what I do have, it's... It, just changes the internal environment for that moment. If you instead go, right, let's go on, let's go on uh, social media. Oh, he's got a really nice car. Oh God, he's really fit, he's a lot fitter than me. Oh, they're having a nice meal out in Italy. Oh. You just go through everything that you don't have in your internal environment goes, you're sick, you're in your house, you've got nothing going on, you've got no relationship, you know, you, whatever, it's a long list. Social media just paints this long list of everything you don't have and, and fills your internal environment with stress, like you have to do something, you have to push yourself, you have to move, you have to, you know, it, it just causes havoc inside. But if you turn that off, get rid of that, get rid of all that social media and sit in whatever experience you're having right now, that isn't forever, remind yourself it isn't forever, and find something that you can be really grateful for. And doing that every day, it's just behavior, it's just behaviors that add to a well being that's gonna support you in your recovery and your energy levels. Getting your sleep down, getting your diet down as much as you can, maybe you need to have a play with that if you've been consistent with it and you know, maybe you think there's something there. Maybe you could try some intermittent fasting. But ideally, I think one of the best things we can do is really focus on that internal environment and where it is every day. Are you living with someone that's very toxic that says, oh, just get up, you know, you're fine, you look fine, you know, what's wrong with you? 
whatever it is, whatever is in your conscious experience that you are seeing with your eyes and feeling with your feelings, all your senses and everything, what could be causing you distress that's negative towards you and your recovery? It could be a person, it could be mold all over the wall, it could be poor sleep from your sleep routine, it could be how you're thinking about your life, you could think about what how awful it is and how everyone else has something going on apart from you, or you're not as rich as you want to be. It's a battle. It is really a battle because when you have your health, it can be a battle. When you don't have your health, it's it's like being in a boat with a broken rudder, I think it's called, and you constantly have to steer the boat back in the right direction. I know it's not the best place I want to be. I don't want to live in this for the rest of my life, but it's not forever. And you keep turning that boat again and again, and it takes a lot of effort, but it pays off. So just being consistent with what, what you've already done and seeing, really sit down and journal. What other things could have changed? Because there were times in my recovery and, you know, four years ago when I had my kidney thing, there were times when I'd be sad in pain or after they did the biopsy, especially after they did the biopsy and it, I hemorrhaged, I'd sit there in pain, I'd look up at the ceiling and go, why the fuck am I here again? What, like, oh my God. And then I'd go on my phone because I had a phone four years ago and I'd look at social media and I'd feel like shit and I'd just be, it's just you can get into a really toxic mindset and it just doesn't aid you in your recovery. How, how I see it now, the body, everything in your body, all the cells, everything, it's like an orchestra and this is the conductor. If, if the cells are listening to you as a conductor and you're just being self-hating and not grateful and thinking, why has my body done this to me and separating yourself from it, all these different things, it's like the orchestra just sounds awful. But when you, you're happy or you're grateful and you're content with where you are at life and you've got a plan ahead of you with where you want to be even if it's just six months from now it just changes the way the body operates it's more functional just being aware as as aware you can be and do what you can and at the same time don't be hard on yourself because so many people when it comes to themselves are incredibly harsh we're our own worst critics a lot of the time you know, we talk about all the things we should do and all the things we should have done. And if it came to somebody else, we wouldn't say, God, you should have done this already. Why aren't you doing that? God, you're useless. You know, well, look at the state, of, you know, whatever it is, the way you talk to yourself can be so hindering to you and where you want to be. Just being very conscious of your mind is very important. And if, you know, you're at that point where you're recovering and you've got energy, but it's not as much as you want or you're not taking off, maybe it's time to maybe start exercising. Depends on how you're feeling. If you're feeling like, you know, I've got energy now, I could go for a walk and just making a habit of going for the walk in the morning. Or if you're feeling tired, not being ashamed to have another rest. It's being, you have to be dynamic with yourself. It's 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 not something where you go right here's here's the plan for recovery boom that's it forever not going outside of that boundary not being afraid to be a bit dynamic and say you know i've improved over the last three months but this week i'm feeling a bit a little bit worse a bit shoddy i've taken a few steps back not being afraid to actually take that step back have a bit more rest listen to your body because at the end of the day when it comes to chronic illness everyone in this situation I don't care whoever it is whoever gets to a state of chronic illness has a trait of not listening to themselves and their bodies and the signals that the body's sending them so if we can learn anything from that is that actually we've got to start listening to ourselves and be a bit dynamic and say, hang on a minute, I can't go to this place this weekend because you know what, I'm not feeling up to it. That's okay, not being embarrassed. There's, you know, I could talk about this all day. There's so many aspects to recovery. And 
really it's about getting the self-awareness of what you don't like and what people you don't like and what situations you don't like and understanding your own cycles that you go through in your mind and how they positively or negatively affect you. What traits you have from childhood that negatively affect you in your life or are positive you know it's just about learning yourself and learning what's good for you i'm hoping that that's insightful in some way <laughs>